Your favorite coach just get back off the road. Coming back from the Final City Clash between Fort Valley State University and Albany State. Man, let me tell you something. Once again, the house divided. I got one son over in Fort Valley currently right now. Another son graduated from Albany State. Boy, that was one hell of a game. And we're going to talk about exactly some of the things that we saw right after this. Because I got I to gotta be honest with you. I left scratching my head trying to figure out what in the world is going on. But we're going to talk about it right after this. You know, it's your favorite coach back at it again. To the toes down, I'm about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a free to tell them to come on in. It's number of positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump on in this thing. Because I got to be honest with you. This game, <clears throat> I got to be I gotta be honest, guys. This game left me scratching my head. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, what in the world is going on. I mean, it, it's kind of like... The uh, uh, Alabama State versus Grambling game. I mean, I'm still trying to understand, like, what in the heck was Coach thinking moving the ball down the field like that? I mean, as far as positioning the ball. But we're going to leave that for another show. We're not going get to get into that right now. I'm just like, hey, look, I, this is why I'm on the sideline. Because right now, I mean, you know, I'll probably be there scratch, scratch, you know, scratch my scalp up, scalp up dealing with all this stuff. But watching this game, this was, pretty, this was a pretty interesting game. This game went back and forth between these two teams. Got to give it up to... <clears throat> both Fort Valley and Albany State University. They got out there, put on a damn good show. Fort Valley jumped out on the board early in the game, scoring the first points, which was a field goal. And then, of course, you had uh, Albany State drive back down the field with um, uh, uh, um, uh, Isaiah Wright. Excuse me, with Isaiah Wright throwing a pass to Christian Grant, who caught a 23-yard touchdown pass. I mean, you had a lot of scoring that took place in the first half. I'm going to get to one of the things that really just blew my mind was towards the end of the first half, um, Albany State had scored a touchdown. And there go, Fort Valley came back. They blocked the extra punt. Dre Duncan took that ball back 97 yards for a, for a uh, point after conversion, or excuse me, a PAT return, what they call it. And, I mean, the game was, what, 15, was it 15 or 20 at the half? I mean, there's a lot of um, – miscues in the game as far as the turnovers, fumbles, interceptions. The quarterback for Fort Valley, I mean, he he put the ball out there in harm's way at the wrong time several times in the game, which allowed them, uh, which allowed Albany State to get the ball back, and they, you know, turned that turn, those um, turnovers in the touchdown. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he threw an interception right before the half, which uh, Albany State was able to score off of, which was a pick six, which they got the return on the uh, – the point after attempt block, which Fort Valley State returns the game, just back and forth, back and forth in the second half. Um, you had a lot of penalties out there on the field, I believe, between the two teams. They were penalized, I think, was uh, 16 times for like 123, 130 yards, something like that. Both teams had opportunities. Check this out. Albany State could have put this game away in the third quarter because, I mean, listen, no one was moving the ball. Albany State got, they got a little rhythm going. They was moving the ball down the field. They got down to the one-yard line. Coach decides he want to get cute. I'm like, listen, offensive coordinator, punch the ball in. I mean, what, what are we thinking about? We're on the one-yard line. Just hand the damn ball off and let that man smash it through the hole and score six points. I mean, you guys wasn't moving the ball up and down the field at all. And this right here, I just said, was another instance of how – Albany State's football season went up and down, herky-jerky all season long. In certain games, they had opportunities but just found ways on miscues where they just could not connect for them to put the points on the board. But, whoa, whoa, I, hey, I ain't done with Fort Valley either. Hey, y'all don't get that, Coach. Uh, you don't get to slide off nowhere with, with, with all of this here because guess what? Y'all made some crazy mistakes as well in this game in which you guys had ample opportunity to move the ball down the field and you kept wanting to allow the quarterback to throw the ball. I didn't understand that. I mean, 
you guys kept playing with the clock. It was like you are taking your we're time. to get Albany State to, you know, make some type of mistake on defense that's going to allow us to get big plays. Don't get me wrong. I got some receivers out there that can catch that ball when, when the quarterback is able to throw them passes to him down the field. Kevin Durham in the game, threw the ball 33 times, complete 19 for 331 yards, one touchdown, but he had three interceptions. Albany State, their quarterback, Isaiah knows he threw the ball 26 times, complete 15 for 150 yards, two touchdown passes, one interception. Now, I'm going to be real with you. Kev, uh, Kevin Durham was able to sling that ball down the field to those Fort Valley receivers. Uh, Dewan Bell, seven receptions for 107 yards, and he had Brandon Marshall and Jamie Hampton both had four receptions for 71 yards. Crazy thing is, these young men was catching darts from uh, Durham, that was, when he had time to throw that ball down the field, I mean, he was connected with those guys. But there was time balls was hitting him in the hands. And Albany State defensive backs, they were able to smack the ball away at, you know, at times where it allowed, it kept them from catching passes. There's so much going on. But back to the clock management, there was too much mismanagement of the clock in the fourth quarter. Excuse me, midway through the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, there was too much mismanagement of the clock, especially with you allowing your quarterback to continue to keep chucking the ball down the field after he had already thrown several interceptions already. I did, for the life of me, I didn't understand what was going on. Now, don't get me wrong. Because Fort Valley had their timeouts in their back pocket, they was able to hold on to those timeouts and uh, force Albany State to run plays in the end if they got a first down, and guess what? The game was over with. Fort Valley's defense still, they, they held true, making sure that they were not able to get that first down. They got the ball back with 20 seconds left to go in the game. Durham tried his best to get the get the team moved down the field. They got they got a little bit of help with some penalties here and there, but in the end, Albany State was able to go ahead, shut this thing, close the door on um, Fort Valley's opportunity of playing Miles College in the SIAC championship game. I know there's got to be a hurtful feeling for those guys tonight as they headed back from. Um, where were we in uh, uh, Columbus, Georgia, headed back to Fort Valley? I know they're sitting there scratching their heads trying to figure out what in the world did we do or what didn't we do to, you know, make certain, you know, make the necessary plays for us to be able to go play Miles next week and possibly knock them off and win the SIAC championship. Guys, this, like I stated before, this was one hell of a game. The score is 15 to 20 at the half. No one scored no points in the second half at all. Like I stated before, you would see drives go down the field and then somebody punt the ball. Drives go down the field, somebody fumbled the ball. I mean, I got to give it up to them. Guys out there, hey, they were laying some wood and talking some straight trash. So you got to give it up to them. But uh, shout out to the guys that was walking back with my wife and I when we headed back from the stadium. They was talking some serious uh, junk. Uh, I think one of them, uh, cousin is uh, Brandon Marshall or something or another. Uh, they, was, they were saying that their cousin was Brandon Marshall. And they kept trying to figure out why... Um, why they kept giving him the ball when he really wasn't, you know, doing his thing out there on the field or whatever have you. It, it was funny, but, I mean, they also was talking about Albany State having the number one defense, and I'm just like, whoa. I looked at some stats. I'm checking out some stats here on uh, SIAC.com. Against, y'all ranked number one. Sacks by Fort Valley was 10. You had In 10 games, you got to have 38. So you guys led in sacks. Um, interceptions, you guys were fifth. With uh, nine was fumbles. Was it Albany State was uh, sixth with six, and Fort Valley was eight with um, with six. So they were right there at six, seven, eight. Uh, Albany State, Morehouse, Fort Valley, all right there together. So I'm still trying to figure out where this number one defense comes from because y'all got to show this to me. But I did also another thing. Uh, fumbles. Uh, what's that? Fourth fumbles. Uh, Albany State had Albany State was ranked what? Number 12 with two, and Fort Valley was ranked number 10 with five. So, I mean, all in all, it was a damn good game tonight watching these two teams go at it. Once again, uh, Albany State is the 2024 Fountain City Classic Champion. Uh, excuse me. Albany State is the 2024 Fountain City. Uh, Albany State is the 2024 Fountain City Classic Champion. Congratulations to Albany State on the win. Boy, my kid, well, my oldest boy will be back. I'm waiting on my uh, my middle son. He'll get out of school in a couple of weeks, and I know they're going to be here talking mad trash. They're down at the tailgate right now having a good time. So, Coach going to fall back, enjoy himself, let them do their thing, and, you know, hey, I'm going to shut this thing down. But, hey, hopefully – I might be at the game next week. We're going to see if uh, Coach can get up in that thing, check out this Miles College versus um, 
Clark Atlanta University. Coach Keaton, you got hey, you got a burner over there, Coach Keaton. Let's see you put that thing together and make it happen. But uh, hey, I know Coach Shea gonna be ready to make sure you got the uh the Golden Bears ready to go out there and play next week. It's gonna be a damn good game. So y'all make sure y'all get your behinds over there to Miles College next week for this game. Go support, go support, go support. But guys, coach gonna go ahead and get up on not this thing, but until next time, be the one and lead.